The movie begins in the future of a technologically advanced society. Catherine Mills, a cyborg, is working for the Harbinger Corporation. She is working at the factory when she gets a sudden message delivered directly to her mind. The footage shows the robot known as SAR, or Study Analyze Reprogram, having an anomaly at the Harbinger training facility. She informs her supervisor that there has been a reprogram count of 1.5 million in less than a day, which is unusual, and her boss congratulates her. While at a military base, Captain Damien Bukes asks one of his men, Drifter, for a report. He informs him that the others are out of the strip waiting for them, as they have orders to join a training exercise. Bukes is not happy with this news, and he also notices Mills sitting nearby. He approaches the soldier in charge to ask what is going on since his team has already been on training the last four times. He tells him that the assignment is only for two days, and they are looking for Marines with combat time. Since few of those are left, his team has to do it, and Bukes has no choice. But before he leaves, he is informed they have to go with Mills as a tech. She follows Bukes outside to introduce herself and explains that there is the hardware on the field they will be testing, so she will be observing it since she is from Harbinger. Bukes asks her to keep an eye on them, and she says she must keep an eye on both them and the hardware, which makes Bukes believe that Mills is trying to work out what she can save money in. She explains that it is not what her company does, but they are only vendors for the military, not the military itself. Bukes cuts her off and tells her to keep up because she will be left behind. He also asks her to turn her eye scanner off because he doesn't want to be scanned, but Mills tells him it can't turn off. Once they board the plane, Hill scans the whole unit and introduces herself to them, and they show their annoyance at her as she is tech. The team consists of Drifter, Sergeant Rory Robinson, Corporal Robert Cutbill, Lance Corporal Martin Goodwin, Corporal Daniela Hackett, and Corporal Sam Loftus. The plane takes off, and the crew keeps themselves busy on the trip by sleeping or doing a crossword. Mills learns about them by scanning them, and by hearing their banter, she notices they are all very close friends. Through her scans, she learns that Bukes has killed 18 and that Robinson has tech implants in his eyes. Robinson points his rifle at her and tells her he sees her. Mills leans in a bit and demonstrates that she can disarm the weapon by just looking at it since that's all she needs to do to access any machine. She also points out she can even fire it from afar while he's checking the chamber, shocking all of them with the information. As they get closer to the location, Bukes gives the unit the basic instructions and reminds them that they have live ammunition and someone will monitor them. Mills discovers that she cannot access the global network anymore, so she is obliged to change to the local one. Robinson tells Bukes that she has tools like the ones in his own eyes, but Bukes tells him that he does not go on to his brain. The plane lands in front of an old facility. The door opens when the locks computer recognizes Bukes. The computers also turn on the lights and repeat a welcome message. But as Bukes makes his way inside, he realizes there's nobody around. The soldiers outside also note this, and they also wonder who will be monitoring them. When Bukes returns, he tells them that they will be moving on. While Mills takes the chance to ask him if he has any ground support or reconnaissance, he tells her they do not have any. Mills thinks they got off the wrong foot, but he does not. The plane leaves, and the team makes their way through the facility while teasing each other. They eventually make it out and into the forest, where Bukes instructs Cutbill to send up a drone and urges everyone not to put their guards down simply because it's training. Once the drones are up, they get going and spread out, and Mills follows behind, and she sees an unidentified drone among the trees. It doesn't take long for them to find the location, so they move to get into their positions. As ordered by Burks, Drifter follows Mills around and asks her to help him out with his boss, and that he got her back covered. Their conversation is interrupted when three strange surveillance drones arrive to stare at them. Drifter is about to aim at them, but Mills stops him. It seems she's trying to gain access to them. Drifter informs his teammates of this encounter, and Hackett reports she sees them too. Mills tells Drifter Harbinger made what he calls these new toys, but she tells him that they have been quantum modified and don't need operators. Drifter comments on the fact they at least know they are here. Bukes has also found these drones but tells everyone to move on. Moments later, their practice targets finally show up, and they notice that the robots are very basic in technology. Bukes designs a plan of attack, and everybody moves to their assigned positions. Mills once again follows Drifter after one more glance at the special drones. After Drifter counts down, they attack using bullets, rockets, and explosives, which is a piece of cake for experienced soldiers like them. The surveillance drones watch and record their tactics, and Mills decides to follow one deeper into the forest. There she finds a more advanced unit, a SAR. Mills is not surprised to see it but is shocked when it turns around to find blood dripping on its head. The fact she can't access it also upsets her. Still, 
she manages to see and download some footage from the robot, which contains images of it shooting people face to face. She closes her eyes, trying to process all this, and when she opens her eyes, the SAR is nowhere to be seen. At that moment, a message arrives from their captain, the day is over, and they have all done well, so it's time to set up camp. Later at night, the team sets up camp and shares some more stories, but Nil sits alone. Drifter can't help but watch her, and the others tease him for it, reminding him that she isn't even human. They also said their targets were easy to get into and had basic technology. Meanwhile, Mills is going through the footage she acquired. Then, Drifter comes to check on her, so he sits by her side and asks her where she had gone earlier, and she says she had to look around. He also asked about the communications, but just like them, she still can't reach out either. She says that something is blocking her transmissions, but she does not know what it is yet. She wonders why Bukes isn't asking her himself. Drifter points out that maybe Bukes chooses not to like her, which Mills thinks is unfortunate for her considering Bukes' kill record. But Drifter says those are contextless figures, and that's why Bukes doesn't want to like her. He says that the figures may be hard to swallow, but it's part of the job, and they are good at their jobs. Drifter also takes the chance to ask Mills about the story behind her getting chipped. She tells him that it happened when she was 11, and without it, she had paralysis. Harkinger sponsored it all and cured her. Moments later, Drifter returns to the camp, where he finds Buke staring at Mills. He asks Drifter if she's told him anything, and he replies that she said she's been blocked off and doesn't know why. Drifter believes her, but Bukes doesn't. He thinks something's off with the training and with Mills. While everyone is getting ready for the night, Mills detects drones in the forest. When she goes to sleep, the strange footage from the SAR appears in her eyes again. Meanwhile, Loftus is staying up to keep watch. One of the drones approaches him. He tells it to get out of there, and it does, but then he hears a noise, and when he looks up with his gun light, he finds the SAR coming after him. Loftus starts shooting at it. At the camp, Mills wakes up to hear everyone wondering about the unexpected shooting noises. Goodwin tells Bukes that he saw Loftus up there, but a second later he was gone. He asks if it's part of the training, but Bukes ignores the questions, so the team starts searching for the forest to find him, repeatedly calling out his name. The morning comes, and they finally find their first clue, blood on the grass. It only takes them a few more steps from there to find Loftus' body, sitting up against a tree dead. Cutbill freaks out at the sight of his friend in that state and wants to get out of there. His superior tells him to shut up as they all get in a defensive position for a possible attack. Mills tells them they are standing in the same target area from yesterday. A drone comes by to watch them but barely stays there for a second before leaving, right before Hackett gets shot and killed. Bukes orders them to move, and they do so, hiding behind the trees, and a bunch of robots shows up where the unit took positions the day before, and Bukes notices this. He and Drifter take out some smoke grenades and throw them to cover the area with fog, hiding them. The robots and soldiers start shooting at each other, and the unit has to keep moving to avoid getting shot. Bukes eventually manages to get closer to the robots, but they strangely back off and disappear into the fog when they see him. At the same time, Cut Bill, who got separated from the team, is on the run. He is trying to contact them, but to no avail. A couple of drones come closer to watch him, he shoots at them, so they leave. As he is checking if the coast is clear, a SAR suddenly comes out and grabs Cut Bill by the neck, and he begs for it to let go. The SAR lets a smaller unit shoot him in the head, killing him instantly. Back to the team, Drifter asks Bukes what he saw, and he explains the robots that he encountered are more advanced than the ones from yesterday. He tells them their armor is stronger now since it can take a shot from him without any damage. Angry over losing his men, he demands Mills tell them what she knows and to turn those robots off. Mills says she can see them but can't turn them off since there's a programming error, but she's running the possibilities. Hearing this angers Bukes more, but Drifter jumps in to defend her. He says she doesn't know as this is a programmer's mistake. Bukes disagrees with the statement since mistakes are inefficient in comparison to the soldiers he has recently lost. Then Robinson returns, who had been looking for Cutbill but only found his helmet, and the team moves to find him. They move through the forest while Drifter reminds Bukes that Mills is useful to them, as she can see things they cannot. Bukes points out that if she sees them, it also means the robots can see her and the team, but Drifter says it doesn't matter because they need all the help they can take right now. Bukes cannot help but think about the attack and wonders why the robots let them walk. Bukes believes it may be because Mills was there with them. She interrupts them to show them something in the forest. It is a lot of dead animals, and it looks like the robots have been using them as target practice, just like they did to Loftus. Suddenly, Mills announces that the robots are tracking them from the ridge, just in time to see more robots show up and waste no time and opens fire. 
So the team starts running away as fast as they can. When a particular shot is about to hit Mills, Bukes pushes her out of the way and drags her down with him, which causes them to roll away and separate from the group. Mills hits a tree and passes out. Drifter tries to contact them to no avail, so he tells Goodwin and Robinson to get moving. Meanwhile, Bukes manages to carry Mills back to the facility entrance and finally makes contact with Drifter as night falls. Drifter reports to Bukes that they are close to the camp, and Burke says Mills is unconscious but has found a safe place to stay for the night. Drifter suggests they will go to him. Bukes orders them to stay where they are as it is too dark and the robots could find them easily, but they will better regroup in the morning. A few hours later, a drone appears in front of Bukes, but it leaves quickly. Burks grabs Mills and hides behind the wall as the SAR approaches them. The robot leans in and makes Mills open her eyes to connect with it before leaving. In the morning, Mills finally wakes up and Bukes informs her she's been out for nine hours. She asked him why he didn't leave her and Bukes says he doesn't know before telling her about what happened last night. Mills replies they need to find that robot. When Bukes asks why she tells him she can't explain it, Bukes orders her to find a way before declaring that they are leaving. Then they regroup with the three remaining soldiers and Drifter says nothing happened to them. They could have ambushed easily last night because the drones were everywhere, so Mills confirms it looks clear ahead and all the signals are behind them. They have decided to go to the drop zone and wait for transport to pick them up. Bukes will take Mills to the door since she's the only one that can open it while the others cover them from behind. Mills declares the road is clear and they make it to the door with no issues. Bukes tries to get in, but the lock's computer doesn't identify him. Surveillance drones fly by, so Bukes orders Mills to get the door. Suddenly, smoke grenades are in the area the robots are copying them. Bukes can't see a thing, and with no time to plan, the robots appear and start shooting them. The soldiers move toward the door, Mills opens the door, and Drifter is shot in the leg right after. The soldiers get into a ditch to hide from heavy fire, so Bukes goes to help them. Drifter orders Robinson to get Goodwin out of there, but Drifter stays back and shoots at the robots to give them a chance to escape. He gets hit again, and the SAR finds him and pins him down. Bukes notices this and goes back to save him. Mills sees this, and she runs and joins them. As the robots see Mills, they stop shooting, shocking them. Mills tries to deactivate them, but she can't. So the SAR is getting in a position to cut Drifter open. Mills still tries to stop the unit, and she tells the soldiers not to shoot, but since she isn't getting anywhere. Bukes shoots Drifter himself before the SAR can kill him to save him from the torture. Mills cries at the loss of her friend, Bukes grabs her and drags her with him, and they finally enter the facility again. Inside the building, Mills yells at Bukes for what he did, as she is sure she could have saved Drifter. She reveals that she was the one who made those robots. Hearing this, they point their weapons at her and demand answers, as nothing makes sense. Mills says she doesn't know why they are here, as Marines come here to train, but she only knows of the request for them there. She says that she is the one that writes the program and designs the prototypes, but the codes have advanced more than they could have imagined. She thinks that if she can understand it, she can control it, but Bukes says it's too late. When Bukes asks her what the robots are for, Mills tells them they are their replacements. The machines will take over for the human soldiers, so no more lives are lost, it learns and improves themselves just like people. None of the soldiers like this, and Bukes points out that his men are dead because of her. Mills cries as he leaves the room. They see that the main door is slowly being cut open by the robots. They need to find a better defensive position. They find another door that says authorized personnel. Goodwin is reluctant as it may lead them outside to the robots, but they don't have any other options, so they order Mills to open it. They go into the dark room, then Mills turns the lights on. What they find inside is concerning a whole unit of SAR robots. Bukes tells Mills not to turn them on, then orders her to open a new door. There they find the bodies of all the facility employees. Mills uses a monitor to connect to the local system. However, she still can't manage to communicate with the outside world. Bukes points out that the place is a bottleneck and they could slow down the robots from there. As the soldiers start setting up charges, Mills leaves the room and locks the door behind her so they can't follow her. Since the SAR units have power, she activates one since they are all connected, so when one wakes up, it will know what they all know. Mills believes if she can get through one of them. The robot wakes up, and after Mills turns on its speech program, it starts answering her questions. Its orders are to run the human combat program, which Mills tries to cancel, but she can't, but it tells her it can't comply because of a human error. It explains that the human training subjects aren't performing as expected, so they need new motivated targets and new human training subjects. 
The robot identifies who she is and that she doesn't have any clearance and denies her access. Mills realizes it was the Guardian SAR who sent out orders to bring the Marines there. She asks when training will be complete, but the robot says it's unspecified. The soldiers tell Mills to open the door, but Mills doesn't listen and tries again to access the units. She isn't successful, and the Guardian SAR starts activating the rest of the robots. At the same time, the robots from the outside finally break in. The SAR units corner Mills from all sides, but Robinson manages to force the door open and drags her inside before closing it again. The robots immediately get on working on cutting open the door. The team returns to the room where Bukes is setting up the charges. The robots break in, and they barely have time to escape before the bomb goes off, which also hits them. When they are down, Mills is hit by an electromagnetic pulse, making her notice that the robots carry EMP grenades with them. They all make it outside, where they find abandoned buildings, training equipment, and more bodies. While the soldiers are looking at the ruins, Mills enters the tunnel and takes an EMP grenade from one of the fallen robots. Afterward, the men divide the ammunition and take a position for a siege. She watches the footage of her teammates' deaths, which makes her cry but also makes her more determined to use the grenade. While everyone waits for the robots, Bukes checks on Mills and sees the grenade. Mills tells him it should be able to deactivate the SAR, but its range is short, so they'll need a detonator. Hitting the SAR leader should stop all the rest of the units. She also explains that maybe they haven't been killed yet because the robots have pushed them there on purpose for more practice and only the EMP can stop them. Bukes points out that the explosion may kill her too. Even if she survives the blast, it will wipe her clean, but Mills thinks it's their only option. They spend the entire night waiting and it isn't until morning that the robots finally come. Mills tells Robinson that multiple signals are coming from the south. Robinson is in charge of drawing them in a spot as a sharpshooter and Goodwin stays out of sight because he has the detonators. The robots enter the city and Robinson and Burke start shooting at them. Mills scans the area to indicate to Goodwin when to trigger the bombs that they have hidden. They manage to shoot down some robots and Mills continues to guide Robinson and Burke safely through the city, warning them of incoming attacks. Mills tells Goodwin to activate the bombs, destroying some of the robots. Meanwhile, Robinson is covering for Bukes, who runs to help Goodwin. A drone finds Goodwin, and he has to move out. The SAR chases him down. Bukes manages to grab and take him, and Robinson dies while covering their backs. They reach a safe point, and Goodwin mentions he dropped the detonator on the way, so Bukes goes out under heavy fire to retrieve it and finds Mills already there. She picks it up, and as the robots come closer, Bukes tells her to run so that EMP will not hit her too, but she refuses. So the SAR makes one of the smaller units shoot Mills, but Bukes catches her as she goes down, allowing her to trigger the EMP grenade. For a moment, it seems all robots have shut down, and Mills is about to as well, but the SAR suddenly wakes up and goes after them, so Bukes drags Mills away. They enter a building and Bukes starts shooting at the robot on the stairs. When Mills starts to shut down, she crawls into the room where Robinson's body is. Soon after, Bukes is thrown inside by the robot, and he asked it to finish him, but the SAR won't because of his orders, but it needs more data to complete the program. So it decides to go after Mills instead, who can identify her, but when it is about to kill her, she activates Robinson's rifle and shoots the SAR down. Suddenly, the robot connects to her and transfers its information into her brain just before Mills, and the unit finally shut down. Hours later, the transport arrives to pick up Bukes, Goodwin, and Mills and get them out of there. The movie ends, as the soldiers enter the plane, and Mills' eyes open, which shows the SAR mission protocol has taken over her. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to my channel to get notified when we post the next recap. See you next time.